that animals had personalities. I knew they had intellect and could think, and I knew they had emotions. And I was taught that by my dog. But nevertheless, when I finally got to Cambridge, it was talking about the chimpanzees, telling stories about the family relationship, the fact that they can use and make tools, which was supposed to be something unique to us, how they show deep depression when a family member dies, how they can show compassion and altruism as when an unrelated individual takes over the task of raising an orphan whose mother has died. So when I got to Cambridge and was told that, that um, only humans had personalities, minds and feelings, I knew these erudite professors were wrong, even though I'd never been to college because of my dog. But the chimpanzees, because they're so like us, and we share over 99% of DNA with them, and because of this, it was easier to open scientific minds so that they began a process still going on and so once you realize that there isn't this sharp line dividing us from the other animals, once you realize it's a difference of degree and not kind, then you realize that there are all these other amazing animals out there. And we're finding out more and more about them all the time, like the intelligence of birds, the intelligence of the octopus, and so on. So during the days when I was studying the chimpanzees at Gombe, I think they were the happiest days of my life, out in the forest on my own, seeing how everything is interconnected. And why did I leave? You know, I got my PhD, I built up a research station, and I left when I realized that the forests were disappearing, that chimpanzee numbers were plummeting, and that in captivity, some of the conditions like medical research labs were shocking. And so I decided the chimps had given so much to me, I had to try and do something for them. So that was in 1986 at this big conference. And since then, I haven't been more than three weeks in any one place. And I'm now nearly 83. So you may be 74, but... <laughs> so, and I still have to do this while I can. I don't know how long my body will last out. My mother gave me all the determination and my father gave me a good constitution. So that's what I thank him for. Anyhow, uh, when I went to Africa to learn more about the plight of the chimpanzees, I very quickly realized that not only were the chimpanzees suffering, but also so many of the Africans. And I realized the extent of the poverty and the lack of education and health facilities. And when I flew over the Gombe National Park, which had been part of the equatorial forest belt, <coughs> stretching right across to the west coast from, from East Africa, and I looked down and I saw now just a tiny oasis of trees surrounded by completely bare hills, more people living there than the land could support, too poor to buy food from elsewhere, struggling to survive. And that's when it dawned on me, unless we do something to help the people to improve their lives, there's no way that we can possibly even try to save these chimpanzees. And so that led to our program, you can Google it, it's called Take Care of Takari. And it started off by working with the villagers, with a team of Tanzanians, finding out what they thought we could do to make their lives better, moving in in that way, and then adding programs like microcredit based on the Grameen Bank. Um, Mohammed Yunus is one of my heroes, and he took me to Bangladesh to meet the women whose lives were changed by tiny little loans. And then when you pay the loan back, you're proud because you've done it yourself. It's not like being handed out money like that. Now, now this is mine, I did it. And pride, empowering women. And we provide scholarships for as many girls to stay in school after the community as we can. And we provide family planning information. And it's been shown all around the world that as women's education improves, family size tends to drop. So that program is now replicated in six African countries. 
And in all cases, the people now are helping us to conserve nature. And <coughs> Gombe is no longer a little tiny isolated patch of forest because the forest is coming back around it and corridors linking the Gombe chimps to others. So that program has been amazingly successful. We're not out of the woods, the chimpanzees are still vanishing. But here in, in Nepal, you have beautiful forests. And as we all know, the big threat that's facing humanity now is climate change. And as more and more forests are cut down, so CO2 is released, this greenhouse gas. And as more and more forests disappear, so there is less trees to absorb the carbon dioxide. And as the oceans are polluted, with all the runoff from industrial farming and all the chemicals. So you get dead zones, and the ocean is beginning to lose its capacity to absorb CO2. And as more and more people around the world eat more and more meat, countries that were poor in China is a status symbol now to eat a lot of meat. And the cattle, the pigs, the chickens are now being raised in billions and forests are cut down to grow the grain to feed them. Huge amounts of fossil fuel with all its emissions used to get the grain to the cattle or to the, to the animals, the animals to the slaughterhouse, the meat to the table and they produce methane gas and that is an even more deadly greenhouse gas than CO2. So not surprising when you think about all the problems we have inflicted on the planet that as I was traveling around talking about these things I was finding young people who seemed not to have much hope. Young people who told me that they were either depressed or angry, sometimes violent, or mostly just apathetic. It doesn't seem to matter what we do because you've compromised our future and there's nothing we can do about it. And when you're my age, and your age too, sir, <laughs> we can truthfully say we have compromised the future of our children. Yes. And you keep hearing, we haven't inherited this planet from our parents, we've borrowed it from our children. We haven't borrowed it from our children, we've stolen the future. And we're still stealing it. 